Good afternoon. Um, my name is uh, Srin Shakya. I'm a professor at UBC. Uh, I would like to welcome you to the Tolling Kok Yuan Canada Foundation and the UBC lecture series on Buddhism and Contemporary Society. Today's presentation is titled Change Yourself, Change the World by Matthew Ricard. This event is made possible by UBC College of Interdisciplinary Studies, the Institute of Asian Research, the Department of Asian Studies, and Mr. Robert Ho and Tolung Yong Kok Canada Foundation, and many volunteers who have contributed their time and energy. Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our special guest, Matthew Ricard. I feel sort of a little uncomfortable about introducing Matthew in English because uh, this, um, if I do it in Tibetan, it's a much better way to introduce him because our language has uh, so many superlatives <laughs> and adjectives to describe Matthew, but that is deficiency of English language. <laughs> so I will uh, 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 only refer to him in Tibetan as Matthew La, and we add La after name as a respect and esteem in which he is held in our uh, community. Uh, Matthew Ricard La is a writer, translator, photographer, and highly regarded uh, for his scholarship and knowledge of Buddhism and Tibetan culture. A Buddhist monk, he resides and works at the Senjin Tarjeling Monastery in Nepal, over 300 monks from across the Himalayan region uh, come to study and live at the Shenzhen Monastery, which supports a broad community that is actively cultivating Buddhist culture and education throughout the region. If you would like to support his work, please pick up pledge form at the book signing table when you leave the, the theater. Matthew La was born in France in 1946 uh, he grew up among the personalities and the ideas of, of Paris intellectual and the artistic circles. He studied classical music, ornithology, and photography. Some of uh, you, the photographs of Matla you can see on the screen. He, he completed his PhD in biochemistry at the Institute of Pasteur. After completing his doctoral thesis in 1972, Matula decided to abandon his scientific career and concentrate on Tibetan Buddhist studies. Matthew has initiated and overseen projects that build and maintain clinics, schools, orphanage, and old people homes and care centers and bridges in Tibet, Nepal, India, and Bhutan. He also uh, implemented projects that preserve Tibetan Buddhist culture and uh, cultural heritage. For his humanitarian work, Mr. Ricard received the French National Order of Merit. Matthew is also a prolific author. He, his book, The Monk and the Philosopher, a dialogue with his father, Jean-Francois Revel, was a bestseller in Europe. The Quantum and the Lotus of Buddhism. A talented photographer, he recently published Tibet, uh, an inner journey, a moving photographic journey into the heart of Buddhist spirituality and into the daily lives and festivals of the people of Tibet. And of course, his recent book, the Happiness, a guide to developing life, the most important skill, sets the theme for this week's lecture. His books have been translated into over 20 uh, languages. In recent years, Matthew returned to his research route he has been a major participant in the research collaboration between cognitive scientists and Buddhist practitioners, spearheaded by the Mind and Life Institute, which was co-founded by the His Holiness the Dalai Lama. He is also the Dalai Lama's personal French interpreter. Through his writing and photographs, Matthew Ricard infused the dialogue between Tibetan Buddhism, its culture, people, and religion and the West with understanding, intelligence, and compassion. His grounds in the understanding of spirituality in both ex experiential and research-based inquiry, inquiry 
and his work is truly example of interdisciplinary research means in our complex world. Okay, can you uh, welcome Matthew Ricard. And uh, I have uh, one final request for you. Please make sure you have switched off your cell phones. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tenzinla. I wish even English language had less superlatives. <laughs> Especially, I saw one at the door. It really shocked me. Happiest person in the world. Meet Mr. Happy. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> anyway. I have to make a public disclaimer. <laughs> I'm quite happy, but anyone can be the happiest person in the world. It's all the point of finding happiness where it is. So be the happiest person in the world, that's no problem. So yes, we were uh, exchanged a few ideas. Sorry also to be late, we had a little technical problem in the beginning about the slides. And uh, so how to transform oneself to better transform the world? It's all the idea of in order to benefit others genuinely. It's quite difficult even we have the intention to do so unless we have some kind of capacity and basic human qualities to achieve that. And that's the whole scope of the Buddhist path. It's not really, technically almost, to achieve Buddhahood. The goal is not to become a Buddha. The goal is become to become a Buddha because of the enlightened and compassionate activity that a Buddha can display to remove the suffering of sentient beings. So that's the really the Bodhisattva vow, the goal of the path, the, the main part is, is the part of achieving enlightenment to gain the capacity to help others. That's the real goal. So now, of course, this is a very lofty goal, but even in our day-to-day -day life, how much we are impaired in our wishes to help others when that wish comes by our own limitation, lack of wisdom, lack of altruism sometimes, our own emotional upheaval and burden, the mental toxins that sometimes overpower us, and that makes us both miserable and also unable to help others, sometimes out of feeling of fear, insecurity. If we are over preoccupied by oneself, like self-concern, self-absorbed, ruminating, relating everything that happens to our own sort of hopes and fears, then of course that preoccupation keeps us in a very sort of narrow world of the feeling of self-importance, self-concern. And then within that, it's like a storm in a glass of water. Everything takes so much importance. Anything that is, uh, goes against our wish and aspiration, that disturbs our present sort of comfort and so forth, becomes an aggression, a threat. When our sort of smallest desire or fancies are not f fulfilled, then we sort of, um, we if something is missing, and then we can't be happy, and so forth. And so because of that, then obviously we always are very vulnerable to the outer conditions. 